The detail is horrific. David Carrick is a prolific sex offender. The former Met Police officer devastated women's lives over two decades. Using his position of power, he lured women in, often finding them online or at social events. He used his police ID to assure his victims they were safe with him. Carrick imprisoned them in his cupboard at home, forced them to commit sex acts on and with him, called them vulgar names and, in some instances, made them clean his house naked. After serving in the army, the 48-year-old joined Britain's largest force in 2001, passing the Met's vetting procedure despite having twice been a suspect for offences against a woman. In 2002, he was investigated for assaulting and harassing an ex-partner. There were no charges. In 2017, he was vetted again and passed. But two years later, he was accused of grabbing a woman. Again, he was not charged. In 2021, he was investigated for rape, but was allowed to keep on working on restricted duties. The complaint was withdrawn, and it was only when he was charged with rape later that year when action was finally taken. I say I recognise that we failed and that I'm sorry and that I know we've let, um, we've let women down. I have tens of thousands of great men and women who really care about policing London, but it's also very obvious I have hundreds of people who shouldn't be here and we haven't been tough enough about dealing with that. And on my watch, that's gonna change. So what is it about the culture of the Met that's allowed a serial rapist to hide within its ranks? A Newsnight investigation last year revealed how a group of former Met Police officers had been exchanging vile misogynistic and racist messages. Everyone in the group used to be part of the Met Police's Diplomatic Protection Group, DPG, now called the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Branch, those who guard ministers, embassies and parliament. It's the same branch that Carrick and Cousins were a part of. During that investigation, we spoke to several former and serving Metropolitan officers who described a deeply embedded culture of misogyny that had been passed down through the generations. We spoke to several female officers. One described the force as a hellhole for women, where you're constantly objectified and treated like your body belongs to them. It's this deeply embedded culture that needs eliminating, argues one serving officer. This job attracts the most disgusting people. Misogyny is something you see all the time. It's just the way it is. Jokes and banter and whatever you want to call it. And that culture is old school, you might think, but it's not really because all ages are doing it. Women feel uncomfortable and preyed upon. I don't see any improvements either, and I've been here a while. You can see how he was allowed to thrive in this place. But how were people with worrying backgrounds and views getting into the Met in the first place? Today, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner said the force was investigating a thousand sexual and domestic abuse claims involving about 800 of its officers. A recent report found that out of more than 700 police job applications it looked at, the decision to grant clearance to 131 was questionable at best. Within these cases, the inspectorate found officers and staff with criminal records or who were suspected to have committed crimes, including some serious ones. No justice! No peace! No rapists! Outside Scotland Yard this evening, women were protesting. They need to stop deflecting, stop being defensive. What we also need to see right now, though, and this is directed at the Home Secretary, is an immediate freeze on recruitment into police forces until they can demonstrate that they are not a threat to women. What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! It's another dire day for Britain's largest force. With confidence in policing at an already all-time low, today's admission from one of its own will only worsen trust in those people who are supposed to protect society. One man, apple, 